Welcome to another video for STAT 420. In this video, we're going to talk about um, the decomposition of variance for a linear model and um, introduce R squared. So um, to kind of get into this topic, I'm going to start with an example. Uh, let's say that we're trying to predict LDL cholesterol levels. So LDL cholesterol would be, um, I think it's low density lipids or something like that. I hope, I hope that's right. Uh, which is also kind of known as the bad cholesterol measure. So it's the, it's the cholesterol, it's, um, part of your cholesterol that you typically don't want to be very high. Um, and so let's say that we're trying to build a model with a predictor that helps us predict LDL cholesterol better than if we didn't have a predictor at all. So we kind of start off with how much variance we have in LDL cholesterol to begin with. So that's kind of represented in this picture over here on the right is we have um, all these different LDL cholesterol levels from different people. Obviously, there's a lot of variability in that measure. Um, so trying to predict LDL cholesterol without any information, my best guess is just going to be Y bar. It's just going to be the mean of, of this distribution. Um, and so, so we can measure and represent the variance in our Y variable with sigma squared, or to be very specific, sigma sub Y squared. Um, and then if we're working with data, we would estimate that with our sample statistic S sub Y squared. That would be the sample variance for our Y variable. So the goal of our model that we want to build is to try to explain some of this variation in the response with one or more predictor variables. But right now we're just going to do one. We're doing simple linear regression, so we're not looking at more than one predictor variable at a time. Okay, so let's say that we pick weight as a predictor variable. And we make a scatter plot, and we notice that in general, as weight increases, we tend to see higher LDL cholesterol levels on average. So that means that I can make um, a more accurate prediction, or at least a, a prediction that has less error in it than if I didn't know weight at all, if I just had this, right? So that means that we still have sigma sub y squared is going to be the variance um, with, with no model. But now we can also measure the variance of y given x. So kind of the conditional, the variance of the conditional model here. That given a particular x value, the variability in our estimate is now going to be sigma sub e squared. And so you can kind of think of the e as standing for error, or you might also call it the residual variance. Um, but it's just going to represent kind of the variance of what our model can't do. It's the, it's the variance of what's left over from, from our model um, um, explanation there. So that's where this term coefficient of determination comes in, um, or more commonly we just know it as R squared. Um, that's what we're really going to call it from now on. And that's going to be the percentage of variance from Y that gets eliminated or explained when using X as a predictor. Um, so the, the formula for R squared, we could kind of represent it like this. It's also represented in a different way in the book, which we'll see. Um, but this one I think is, at least for me, is the one that I'm more comfortable with and that I think is a little bit simpler to see. Um, so, so if you think about it this way, the numerator here is representing um, the variance that we start with, so how much variance total we have, minus our leftover variance. So, so this is um, going to be total variance. This is going to be kind of the remaining variance. So it's the, the variance of our remaining error, of our remaining residuals. And then we're going to divide it again by the total variance. So that means that the numerator is essentially representing the amount of variance that we are explaining. It's the amount of variance that is going away when we build this model, right? So we have our total variance minus the remaining variance is going to be equal to the variance that we did explain. It's the variance that did go away by building this model. And then by dividing that by total variance again, we're turning this into a percentage, right? Because if we didn't explain any variance, this value would come out to zero. And if we explained all of the variance, if we didn't have any leftover variance at all, then this would come out to one. Um, so we can kind of turn this into a percentage, and I'll, I'll move my, my head out of the way here so we can see that. Um, so we can kind of interpret this as the percentage of variability in the response variable that is explained by the predictor variable. 
So in this particular example, it looks like R squared was about 0.52. Um, so we could turn that into 52% in our interpretation. So we could say 52% of the variability in LDL cholesterol levels is explained by weight. Now that doesn't mean that weight is directly causing 52% of the, of the variability in LDL cholesterol levels, only that it's correlated with it. Um, so, so when we say the word explain, what we really mean is just like, if I know this predictor, then I can explain away 52% of the variability in my predictions, right? I can make that much more accurate a prediction with that predictor. Now, I'll also kind of mention here um, what you would see in the book, which looks a little bit different. And so the reason for this is just because if, if I was doing this by hand, this would actually be kind of the simpler computational formula to use for R squared. I think this one, at least for me, is a little bit easier to digest. Um, it's a little bit easier for me to kind of interpret this, whereas this representation is kind of taking away some of the extra stuff I don't need, right? Because if you think about the variance measures, those are going to be divided by n minus 1, but I don't, that doesn't really matter if I'm if I'm trying to com compute it as efficiently as I, as I can. Um, I wouldn't bother with the variance terms. I would just be using kind of the, the sum of square terms um, here. So I'll start here with this kind of SST would be the sum of squares total in the Y variable. So it's just kind of my, my Y points minus the Y minus Y bar squared. So this is, again, just the total variance in the Y variable. Um, and then the sum of squares regression, that's going to be the variance that is explained. It's the, it's the variance that I can kind of take away. So by looking at this um, sum of squares of y hat minus y bar, I'm basically measuring how much variability I explain by making this prediction. And then the sum of squares error is going to be the amount of variability that's still left over. So it's the distance from y hat then to my actual data points y. So then um, one thing I'll mention here is that SST is going to be equal to SS regression plus SSE, or sometimes SSE is also abbreviated RSS, residual sum of squares. Um, but just kind of a note here that SST is going to be these two terms together. So this is the total variance. This is variance explained. And this is going to be variance unexplained. So R squared, I can write this a few different ways. And again, there's it's not important that you have to like have these memorized or anything as much as it's just kind of being familiar with, with different ways that we could write it. Um, but we could write R squared as the variance that we explained divided by the total variance. We could also break this into kind of the, the, the data format, the way that I would compute this. Um, you could also do SST minus SSE. Again, that's kind of what this one look like. This is really SST minus SSE, except I'm making them variances, so there's there's a not denominator to each of those terms. Um, but but yeah, I can represent it in all of these different ways, and, and they all work. Um, you don't have to memorize them as much as it's just kind of important, as long as you know conceptually what R squared represents, and you can look at one of these representations and be like, yes, this is what R squared represents. That is really all you need to know.